right now it's Friday. We're gonna head out to Shell Island until Sunday afternoon. And I knew the perfect boat. It's a very historical boat, but we're wanting to kind of let the kids let loose and just play and have fun. There is a big storm blowing in right now. It got to blowing hard enough to break us loose. We're gonna hit that other boat. That's catastrophic. All right, we're kicking off summer vacation right because we have my son Austin, one of his buddies, Noah. Got my boy Jackson here and his buddy Weston. Got Angie taking a nap. Right now it's Friday and we're gonna head out to Shell Island until Sunday afternoon. So we've gone there a bunch of times. It's where we hang out nearly every weekend during the summertime. We have camped out there before. We Remember when the one kids time. were little yep. down in a tent on that white soft powdery sand? It sounds amazing and comfortable, but it's not at all because your it's tent compact. actually packs that sand into concrete. All right, we're gonna do a weekend out of the island. We're gonna do it in style this time. So on the way right now to meet us out here at Shell Island is a really, really, really neat boat. It's a wood hull built in 1955. It's called the Fantasy Island. What's up, McNair and Boat? Yay! We do everything together with the McNairans. If y'all so, think you have close friends, okay, just remember this. Me and Ricky planned on getting married about the same time, at the same time. We planned our kids at the same time. And uh, that's close. It's probably special. closer than most guys ever get to each other, but <laughs> it's all cool. Yeah. <laughs> You're, yeah, okay. I'm not gonna say anything else. <laughs> All right, Dad, come on. Let's go. Hurry! One, two, three! Got it! If you're wondering, where is this place? Shell Island. Pretty much all the bay systems in the Florida Panhandle have barrier islands just offshore of the bay systems, usually just a mile or so. And those barrier islands is what creates these bay systems. And Shell Island is just the one that's here in Bay County. This separates our bay, St. Andrews Bay, from the Gulf of Mexico. So when we first had this idea to go spend the whole weekend out at Shell Island, I was like, well, you know, we're gonna invite some friends and invite their kids, and then we're gonna bring our kids, and then our kids are gonna bring some friends with them. So we're talking about a lot of people and a lot of kids, which is gonna be fun, it's gonna be chaos. But we're wanting to kind of let the kids let loose and just play and have fun. And I knew the perfect boat. I just didn't know if we'd be able to pull it off or if my really good friends, Mandy and Megan, would let us try to pull this off on the Fantasy Island. And the Miller family, we've been close with them for a long time. In fact, yeah. Mandy and uh, Megan were both bridesmaids in our wedding. Do you remember mm -hmm. that? Yeah, of course I remember that. 17 years ago. <laughs> 17 years ago. Yeah, yeah. they were bridesmaids. In I wedding. do kind of remember. The Miller family, it's a really cool family, a local family that has been in the boat building business really since Panama City became a city. They helped shape the city that we live in right here. It's a very historical boat. And just for that matter, to be able to go spend a weekend with our kids, I feel like I'm passing on that tradition, that local history to our kids, to the next generation. generation. Are you back, honey? Oh, okay. Two, two, three, Then we went back to the boat and joined up with the crew and just relaxed. It was cooling off. Normally during the daytime, there's thousands of boats that come out there. And uh, now the sun's setting and it was really just us and a couple of other boats yeah. that were anchored out there. They were also planning to spend the night. This is the first time we, I mean, since we camped there like 10 years ago, that we get to just chill. We were exhausted and all of a sudden Ricky's like, who wants to go fishing? 
Thanks, Ricky. I'm glad that you got you took my kids out there and they caught some big old redfish they too. Did, yeah. That's kind of like a cool afternoon thing we have is catching these big reds, and so they check that off the list. All right. Good job, guys. Jace is about to catch one and then it broke off. Dude, I have two on and then yeah, both it broke off. They both All right, so day one complete. We had a great first day. Everybody's still alive. No injuries. <laughs> day two, however, that all could change. <laughs> all day, it's gorgeous. All right, I'm gonna make coffee. Make some for me too. Cold coffee. Definitely not your typical boat food right here. It's Saturday morning. I have two deer shoulders bowling in from a deer that Jace McNairn shot. We're gonna brown them up and then we're gonna put them all back in here, make a little gravy, some veggies and stuff and let it cook all day. I like the salt and pepper every different part as I'm putting it in and I kind of keep track of how much salt I'm putting in here. You'll notice this same method in a lot of Southern cooking and a lot of Cajun cooking. You brown the meat, you make a gravy, you add a lot of veggies to it, put it on rice. You can add a little mix here and there, a little different seasoning, a little different sauce or something, but at the end of the day, that makes everything good. Shoulder number two, do you hear that sizzle? Brown it down. And there's a bunch of kids here that probably don't eat wild game on a regular basis. And I'll be interested to see this afternoon when we get in what they think of this. This is whole wheat organic real flour. So we're just gonna cook this flour. It's a roux, and I'm gonna make it thick. Peanut butter kind of consistency, beef broth. Now we got the start of something beautiful. It gets easy from here. This is the best part. I'm gonna crank my heat up just enough to let that see that start bubbling again. I wanna see that gravy start to get a little bubble to it. Bell pepper, onion, and carrots. Kids are funny about veggies. They recognize the carrots, but the peppers and the onions all just kind of turns into part of the gravy. They usually don't ever say anything about the veggies. More salt and pepper. The only added thing for flavor is a little of this W sauce. Thicker, heartier, just, uh, if you taste this stuff, you'll never buy regular Worcestershire again. We got the whole, oh, I see my gravy starting to get a little bubble to it. Oh, y'all look down there. Yep, there's our first bubbles. So we're just gonna throw our taters in the pot. And I know what y'all are asking. You're pulling them straight out of the bag. Yeah, it's a mashed bag and they've already been washed. So 20 minutes actually start to finish. You have the complete meal in the pot ready to go time to go play actually lots of other families came out there too we had the pitts family uh, the lewis family yeah, come join right. us on the boat a few fans of chasing the sun oh, randomly yeah. pull up and you know it's one of those things like you see this giant motor yacht and you got a couple of cool tower boats tied up behind one of them, my boat which has the wrap with all the chasing the sun logos and stuff it's an eye catcher yeah it is i'm kind of like the the more the merrier kind of guy so when i see people pull up you know hey i want to go talk and hang out and yeah, just like that ricky's showing up with his mom Miss Avis is here to join the party. I mean, we want to entertain these kids. We brought everything. Kayaks, paddle boards, skim boards, mass snorkels, spear guns, tubes, boats, all of this stuff. Y'all know how this is when you, when you buy your kids all this stuff for Christmas and they open up the boxes and they play with the boxes all the whole time. What do the kids want to do? Just jump off the boat. Speed up more. 
That's what happened. I started laughing. Where's your ice cream man? Hey, we want ice cream. Oh, oh, my my ice cream. Ice cream. I want chocolate chip cookies. Where's my video? I did. Chocolate chip cookie. Another ad for It's pretty cool where we're anchored up. We can actually see up here on the top deck of Fantasy Island. We can see over the dunes of Shell Island and out into the Gulf. It's an amazing view right here. This, we're on right now what we call the bay side, and now we're going to the Gulf side. Deer shoulders to me is probably my favorite part of the deer. Well, unless we're grilling backstrap or something or making burgers or, well, actually I like it's it all. It's all good. Okay. <laughs> Kudos to the cook. Mm -hmm. right. Weston agrees. Yes. Yeah. Noah does too. <laughs> um, Along with Jace. How's it kind? Eight, seven, <laughs> six, seven, five. I like the rice. There is a big storm blowing in right now. This is part of just like life on the water. Well, my boat is anchored out here and it may drift off in just a second if I don't go tend to it. So we're gonna give this reset and then I'm gonna enjoy an actual bowl of my smothered deer shore. I'm gonna stay here and make sure the women and kids stay safe. Oh yeah, thanks a lot. Of course, I like eating good food. That's why I like to cook good food, but seeing other people enjoy it is way more important. And I just took a shower, so it's getting really windy out here. I don't want to risk getting wet. Saturday afternoon, it starts raining, which isn't a big deal. It's summertime, you know. We get these little pop-up storms basically every afternoon. But I started looking at the radar, and uh, the the band that was coming at us was purple. Purple is bad. That's intense. Red is bad. But when it's red with purple inside, that's real bad. So we know we're about to get walked with a big one. <laughs> we're gonna get walked with a big one. Oh, we got walked with a big one. <laughs> so our first order of business is to secure our boats. pushing us in there pretty hot. A wise man, Todd Jones, told, told me, never go faster than you're willing to hit something. I'm probably take that knife like that. Don't burn, don't burn. Sometimes I get ridiculed for being neat and orderly and all that. This is why you can't sit here and untangle stuff and try to save your boat. You gotta be ready, ready to jump on there, add a few extra lines on. I would say it's gonna come back whether you want it to or not. Can you run up there to the top, please? Okay. Hi, cool. Hey. Make me laugh. Oh, um, not really. It's a certain range. <laughs> slide this bumper so that line slide as far back this way as you can. Right there? Yeah. So, disaster avoided. Now, everything's safe. So now I get to go to if there's anything left. If you just eat regular organic brown rice, it has a ton of flavor. And if you don't have a big spoon, scoop your rice out with a spatula. So remember earlier when I talked about sneaking those veggies in for the kids? Look at this. You see meat and gravy. Perfect. We get his boat tied up where it's gonna be out of the wind. My boat is just hanging off the back with a long line, so it can kind of just ride back there on its own. Good plan, right? Should be easy. Should be. Yeah, should be. 
something just cool and magical about these storms like this. God's in control, you're not. But dang, we sure try to control it. I mean, that's outdoors in general, I think, is like we want to be able to control what goes on in nature. It always keeps you in check because you know at the end of the day, you're not in, not in control. In 1955, they built the new Dixie Queen that she served as the head boat. And then in the early 80s, they decided to turn it into a uh, wind, wind switching again. Our stern anchor may have broke loose. So anyways, they repurposed the new Dixie Queen and built this big structure on it and you know put all the beds all the kitchen and all this cool stuff in here and renamed her the fantasy island now i'm going to go back outside we swung a good bit so we're going to make sure we're still holding tight we are not we're not we are definitely not i mean it's fine everything's fine that third anchor is doing something this is something we always do. We actually used to do this for tarpon fishing. So we'd hook up while we were anchored up. We'd have to throw our anchor or throw our buoy off and then go chase the fish down. If you have to ditch your anchor for any reason, that way you can always come back and find it. Something had to happen, bro. I feel like there's Coast Guard. What? I feel like there's Coast Guard. You do? I think I'm like, a rescue swimmer. I think your dad's cooler than a rescue swimmer. I'm gonna be your rescue swimmer today, too. Oh, what a move is that? The Guardian. Uh, we watched that the other night. Oh, son, you better get your hand out of the way from that. It pulled tight and actually stopped the swing. That's what I'm saying, that's what happened over there. Yeah. We just had all that momentum and all of a sudden, bam. In between yeah. the first uh, band that came through, there was a little calm before the, the really real storm. big storm that came through. We were able to get Belle to Shell Island That's to right. do her last, yeah. her last bathroom. You better break. go now or you're holding it for the night. <laughs> you did? You did or she did? <laughs> I went pee pee too. <laughs> Belle's last trip to the hill amongst all the storms Let's go. The storm rider herself. She we made survived. it. Have you seen? You know it's a little sketchy when Angie puts her life jacket on <laughs> to get on a paddleboard. We made it. I didn't fall in. Did she I didn't get bathroom? struck by lightning, and she went to the bathroom. All right. This one band came through that, you know, looked a little nasty on the radar, but it wasn't bad. I knew this next one coming on the radar just kept getting worse and worse. It's like, you know what, I'm gonna go ahead and fire these motors up and be ready just in case. If this boat breaks free from her anchor, that's catastrophic. It probably blew 50 miles an hour or, or more. And luckily Ricky noticed really quickly that she had broken loose and we were now dragging the anchor. The party continues. You do not have to talk to me. <laughs> You're fine. I'm just holding up now. It's all good. So that was chaotic. It got pretty wild. And it got to blowing hard enough to break us loose. And when I say the anchor broke free, it was still connected to the line. It just was had, had broke free from the ground and we were dragged. And there was another big motor yacht about, I don't know, 200 yards off our starboard over here. Ricky goes, we're going to hit that other boat. <laughs> The motor yacht that we almost crashed into is right here. We got to uh, within, Ricky said, about 10 yards of hitting that yeah. motor yacht. And so I ran up here and fired this thing up and I just had to drive straight north over our anchor line. Um, and now we're just out here in the middle of the bay holding up. Yes, sir. No anchors? No, there's Big bat, big baskets with a bunch of rope. No <laughs> big baskets with a bunch of rope. Even though the anchor line was running straight out the bow, um, we were dragging that anchor at that point, so it was useless to us. So it was either drift into the boat behind us or drive over the anchor line. And I did try to kind of leave it along the side of the boat, hoping we would just drag it down the side of the boat. And it's, it's pitch black dark. You can't see anything outside. I turn on this chart plotter. It's set in head up mode where your chart continually spins. 
and it doesn't give you good information in my opinion. I like it set on north of, but that's just me. So I can't really tell what direction we're facing. And we get the lights on inside at least so I can see a compass. So I'm just trying to kind of hold up and kind of keep bumping forward to hopefully move away from that motor yacht. And we got very close to it. How close? Ricky's standing right here. How close? I mean, what got closest to it? My boat that's dragging behind us or the actual Fantasy Island? Or both at some point? Fantasy Island, 50 yards, your boat, 10. 10 yards. He, his boat's on the side, so you got to think, you got these big swells rolling down the side. So if you really get going, I mean, his boat's going to bounce up onto this boat. So, I mean, and he was trying to fend it off as, as much as he could. We had one smaller anchor that Ricky rigged up on the line that's left on here. And now we currently have that one set. And because the storm's passed and it's calm, it's actually holding us here. Come tell us. What? Angie's got her visor on backwards. What? Oh. <laughs> I've been working. Come here, Ricky. Ricky cut his foot on something. He's bleeding a little bit. <laughs> but this is the team somehow kept one of the coolest, most historic boats ever built in Bay County off of the hill. <laughs> and she was running up towards that hill mm. quick tonight. By the grace of God. Yes, thank you, Lord. We are still floating. All the kids did really well. They had a good time inside, kind of watching all the drama unfold outside. Tony Lee, Miss McGill got the TV running for them. We let them get on their cell phones and play and just kind of distract them from what was going on. And uh, they got tired and they wanted to go to bed. Yeah, our bed somehow got taken over by kids. I'm not exactly <laughs> sure how that happened. I guess in the heat of the moment, they were like, hey kids, wherever you feel comfortable. At this point, it's just funny, like we're so tired, it doesn't matter. Just pick a soft place That's and it. lay down. Mm -hmm. I'll give y'all a lot of credit, man. Trying to, to, like you helping me and Ricky out, trying to keep the boat safe, and then the other ladies taking care of the kids. This is why it's so good to raise a family together. We talk about that all the time, but man, everybody has a role. I'm in an enclosed wheelhouse here, so like whatever's happening out there, and then you have to think, it's like a hurricane. I mean, the wind is blowing 50 plus miles an hour, driving rain, and even if I had the door open, I probably still couldn't hear what was going on down there. So so Angie was kind of getting a message from Ricky and relaying it back. Oh. And it's not like y'all could talk on the phone to each other because you're using both hands to drive not the so. boat. Ricky's using both hands to keep the yeah. smaller boats safe. Yeah, which and is exactly why we didn't really get this stuff on, on film. I so wish that we had that footage just to see how intense it gets so quickly yeah. which is why when i see people offshore in small boats i think man i just hope they don't get in one of these squalls because yes i get it the forecast is beautiful and it's nice right now but in a matter of so seconds quick. man it just it gets on yeah. you so quick and you can't predict it you don't know where it's going you don't know where it came from it just happens and you're in it so you better be prepared for it. and luckily we were about as well prepared as you could be yeah. for this type of scenario but Ricky needed to get his mom and his wife, Tony Lee, back to the dock because they both had things to do. Tony Lee had Tony, vacation Bible yeah. school the next day. Well, she was getting set up for a yeah. week long of vacation Bible school. So she needed to get back Saturday night. And Ricky's mom was just planning on staying for a few hours that afternoon. So she was gonna go <laughs> she, home for the night. She got more too. of a trip than she bargained for. <laughs> so Ricky had to take them back to the marina Yeah. anyways. So it was probably about 11 o'clock by the time he was able to take mm -hmm. them. But he had another purpose for going yeah. back to the marina. Because now that we're safe the storm has passed through it's just weird to, to experience that complete chaos and then this like just the most tranquil calm <laughs> setting out on the bay at night very peaceful yeah very peaceful but uh the only problem was we didn't have an anchor suitable to hold the fantasy island safely where anybody would ever get a chance to sleep or feel safe mm -hmm. so it was nice that he ran in and not only dropped his, his mom and his wife off but grabbed us a big anchor mike miller came and met him at the marina that's right brought him a big old anchor down there but we'll mark a new waypoint now second anchor is out it is set we're, we're in 20 feet of water and we have about 300 feet of line out so if you understand what scope is on an anchor line we're good but what i'm going to do now I'm gonna zoom in on my chart plotter as far as I can, and I'm gonna mark a waypoint. I would love to get just a minute of sleep tonight. I'm gonna come back in about 15 minutes, and if we're still sitting on that exact same waypoint, then I'll shut the engines down and hopefully catch a little sleep. Good night. This is like best case scenario here. The Fantasy Island's in great shape. Uh, both of our boats are perfect. Yes, we lost two 
paddle board the mat, but really, I mean, geez, that's not bad at all when you're looking at what could have happened. Good morning, day three. <laughs> this is a really good morning because the Fantasy Island's sitting right behind us in perfect shape. Everybody's sleeping. There. Looking for our lost paddle boards on Shell Island. And there's two white tailed deer. There's not a whole lot of woods on these islands, but there's enough to sustain. Pretty there's decent. There's three deer there. Is there three? Oh, yeah, there's I think one on the left now, yeah. Oh, I think I see a paddle board. Oh, yeah. Right on the beach. One item retrieved. How many more to go? Uh, two anchors and a big floaty mat. You want to take this from me? No, I'm videoing. <laughs> You're doing good, babe. Hold on, we got to take the other side. I jumped in the water with a mass and snorkel, looked at the propellers, didn't see if there was any damage under the boat. Perfect. Yeah. Time to keep partying. I remember the uh, tourist. Yeah, uh, thanks boat to the driver. guy running the big. Uh, catamaran sailboat out there uh he had actually already rolled the mat up for us yeah. and had it sitting there waiting on the that's so lucky that's crazy huh yeah. we went over yeah. to the gulf side and played football on the beach they surfed do you remember pushing? Oh, yeah. yeah he pushed them into the waves and they all got a chance to surf we finished on a very high note you can't beat that if you don't have fun doing stuff like that then man maybe outdoors is just not your thing but even if it's not, man, just give it a shot because stuff like this, like we didn't plan all this like extra adventure, but it just happened. I think if you just put yourself out there, where there's a camping trip near you in the forest somewhere, just go to a beach, a lake, whatever. If you get your family and some friends together, go plan to spend a weekend outside, adventure is going to find itself. You're never going to come back and go, oh, I wish we didn't do that. <laughs> I mean, you can sit around the house all weekend and watch movies. You're not going to remember that 20 years later. A trip like this, you'll remember this, your kids will remember this for the rest of their life. You did so good surfing, Dad. No, you did so good surfing. Good job. So, that was it. This was our adventure. I'm glad y'all got to ride along with us. I hope y'all learned something, enjoyed it maybe inspired you to get your kids or maybe somebody else's kids cook them some good food show them a good time and i guarantee you they'll want to pass it on to the next generation this is our life it's always an adventure <laughs>